In this video, I will talk about asymptotic stability, which is uh, critically important for uh, state space representation and its relation with the Bible stability, which we generally talk about in the context of uh, transfer functions or impulse response representation. Okay, in asymptotic stability, the main thing that we conserve is the initial condition response of the states. We technically don't care what happens to input and what happens to the output from the perspective of asymptotic stability. For this reason, this is the equation that we consider for continuous time systems and for discrete time systems, this is the equation that we consider for discrete time systems. Okay, so technically we look at the state evolution equation. Okay, so a continuous time system, LTI system of course, or a discrete time LTI system is stable in the sense of asymptotic stability. Okay, if and only if, okay, x of t limit as t goes to infinity norm of x of t is going to zero or for discrete time systems if limit as k goes to infinity x of k is equal to zero okay, i think it kind of makes sense so under no input or output if we start from an answer initial condition okay as time t or k it doesn't matter goes to infinity if all the uh, states are going to zero, which is that state like natural uh, value, the technical equilibrium of the system, then it is asymptotical state. Okay, that kind of makes sense. I think it's very uh, close to the stability definition uh, when we have impulse response representation, and we know that one of the uh, necessary conditions is not sufficient, such impulse response should go to zero as time goes to infinity. Okay, it's very similar from the uh, similar perspective, but in this case, we want all of the states to go to zero as time goes to infinity. Okay, so this is the definition, this is the requirements. So for discrete time and continuous time system, how we can check? Actually, it's very easy. So I included the proofs uh, derivations in the lecture notes. I really recommend you to look at that, okay? But the basic idea is we look at eigenvalues of A and G matrix. Okay, so we have eigenvalues such as lambda i. Okay, we have m main eigenvalues such that i is element of zero, not zero, of course. Let's get one, one to n, one to n, and this is true for discrete and continuous time systems. For continuous time systems, when lambda i, the real part of lambda i, is less than zero, and for discrete time systems, when the magnitude of lambda i, which is a complex number, is less than 1, the system is automatically, asymptotically stable. And this is a necessary and sufficient condition. Actually, it is very similar to the Bible stability condition that when we talk about uh, Bible stability for uh, transfer function concepts, what we do is we look at the poles and we do the same condition. Okay, this means that for continuous time systems, all of, of the poles should be located in the open left out plane, all of the eigenvalues, okay? And for discrete time systems, all of the poles should be located inside the unit circle. So under these conditions, the system is asymptotically stable. If you evaluate this condition, if you have an eigenvalue on the major axis for continuous time systems, or if you have an eigenvalue on the unit circle for discrete time systems, then your system is not asymptotically stable, okay? so. We had the same condition for Bible stability, right? Okay, except we look at the real part of PI here and magnitude of PI here. And we know that eigenvalues and poles are closely related, okay? And in many cases, they are equal to each other, okay? Uh, in that context, it's important when they differ from each other. Okay, that's good. So we have Bible stability. That's great. Okay, we can also talk about this. Good. Okay, so before giving an example, uh, let's try to talk about, uh, and let's limit ourselves for discrete time system because the story is the same. We have discrete time system. Okay, we have lambda i's and we have poles. Okay, good. So first of all, we know that if pi is a pole of the system, then it's an eigenvalue, right? Okay, if all of my poles, are also eigenvalues, okay, so I know that. So in this context, if I know that state space representation is asymptotically stable, then we know that the system is BIBO stable, 
because I know that all of my eigenvalues are inside the unit circle. And I know that if I have a pole, it's also an eigenvalue, then I can automatically say that all of the asymptotic stable systems are also BIPO stable. That's good. I can do that. Uh, so can I say that if the system is a BIPO stable, okay, if system is BIPO stable, that's great. Can I also show, uh, claim that it's also asymptotic stable? The question is no. Almost always it's true, but for not all of the cases, we can guarantee that. The reason is, it's very simple. We can have an n-dimensional state space representation. Okay, good. It's nice. We compute the, uh, let's say, uh, transfer function g of c. It can be, for example, m minus one dimensional or m minus two dimensional because of poser cancellation. And during the poser cancellation, for example, we can have an unstable eigenvalue lambda, let's say j, and it's possible that lambda j is not equal to p k such that k is a pole of the system. Okay, so it's very simple. During poser cancellation, we can cancel unstable eigenvalues. So technically, we cannot say that this is always true. And the important thing is this. If your all of the eigenvalues are inside the unit circle, it's of course, it's as well stable and Bible stable. That's great. Okay, so if your system is Bible unstable, okay, Bible unstable, uh, let's say you have a like, uh, for example, P3, real part of P3 is greater than zero, you know that it's Bible unstable and we know that it's also an eigenvalue, so asymptotic is also unstable, okay? And if I know that it's Bible stable, it's asymptotically stable, I cannot say that, okay? It's one of the important things. Okay, so if it's by one stable, I know that it will be asymptotically unstable also. That's for sure because it will preserve itself on the other side. Okay, so uh, the main idea is pose reconciliation. You should uh, solve your problems or approach these kind of stability conditions from this perspective. All of the poles are eigenvalues, but due to pose reconciliation, it's possible that some of the eigenvalues are not the poles of the system. And always try to remember this and try to solve this from this perspective, not just using memory such that for, if it's unstable, it's autumn Bible still, it's true, but think about the eigenvalues and poles and their relation, then try to comment on the uh, results. Okay, let's solve an example to better understand the uh, difference. Okay, let's say that, that's great. So x of t, x dot of t is equal to 0, 1, 1, 0, x plus 0, 1, u, y is equal to 1 minus 1, x. That's great, right? So the first question is, is the system asymptotically stable? So what are we need to do is we need to compute eigenvalues. So determinant lambda i minus a or minus g, it doesn't matter. And this is, this is a continuous time system. Okay, we are looking at the perspective of continuous time systems is equal to lambda minus one minus one lambda and we need to take the determinant of this if i take this it's equal to lambda square minus one so i have lambdas one and two is equal to plus minus one okay so this is a continuous time system i have a pole here i have a pole here i know that this is stable but this is unstable so my system is not asymptotically stable Okay, that's great. So we found that this state space representation is asymptotically unstable. The second question is check the Bible stability. What we need to do is we need to compute the transfer function. Okay, that's great. So let's clean this and let's try to find the transfer function. And technically we'll finalize everything about the stability after that. Okay, so h of s is equal to c si minus a inverse times b okay that's great this is equal to one minus one okay this is s minus one okay minus one s inverse this is zero to one okay if i take that i will see that this is equal to what okay this is equal to this okay one minus one okay s one one s 
divided by, okay, s square minus 1. I did a little bit of Abizuf notation, but this is a, a scalar polar. It does matter. So if I computed that, it will be equal to uh, minus s minus 1 divided by s square minus 1. That's great. Okay. But you will see that this is equal to minus 1 divided by s plus 1 because one of the poles, which is in the right side of the imaginary axis, is cancelled. Okay, we have a single pole, and it is located in the open left half plane, so this system is bi-stable. That's great, right? Okay, uh, so we show that case such that the system is not stable, but it is bi-unstable. Okay, so uh, let's uh, do some reasoning and try to understand what happens, and let's do it from the perspective of discrete time systems. Okay. So I have a discrete time system, uh, state space representation, and I compute the transfer function g of c. Okay, what I do is I look at the eigenvalues here, I look at the poles here. So first of all, uh, if you have equal number of, let's say, eigenvalues and equal number of poles, and you know that uh, your g of z, okay, you have a, like n of z, divided by d of c, it doesn't have any positive cancellation. If they are equal, then you can clearly say that asymptotic stability technically implies Bible stability, vice versa. So if it's asymptotic stable, then it's Bible stable. If it's Bible stable, it's asymptotic stable. Or if, for example, there is an uh, eigenvalue that's outside of the uh, unit circle, you know that since state space percentage eigenvalues are equal to the poles of the system, without any boundary cancellation, it is unstable. Okay, so this is first thing. So when they can differ, okay? Let's say you have a state space representative, it's n-dimensional, but you have g of z, which is n minus p-dimensional, where such that p is greater than zero, and of course, it's less than n. Okay, so in this case, what can happen, okay? So let's uh, let's do some results. Okay, so let's assume that I have two eigenvalues. That's great inside of the unit circle. Uh, I have let's say four, but I have an eigenvalue outside of the unit circle. Okay, so here can I say anything? Okay, so I cannot say it. I can I can say that it can be stable or unstable in terms of Bible stability because if I cancel this, if I have only eigenpoles uh, that are inside the unit circle, if I cancel the eigenvalue that is outside of the unit circle, then this is unstable, but this can be stable, right? Okay, that's great. I think uh, it's for sure that we know that this is unstable, this is biopsy, so they are different. Or let's get from different perspective. Okay, so let's clean that. Okay, let's clean that. So I have a Bible stable system. I know that I have, let's say, three poles or four poles inside of the unit circle, but I know that these poles are eigenvalues, that's for sure. Okay, that's great. Okay, but I don't know if there's an uh, eigenvalue that's outside of the unit circle because there's a cancellation. So from this perspective, I cannot comment on the stability of state space system because I know that I lost a pole, an uh, eigenvalue due to poles cancellation, I cannot really comment on anything about the asymptotic stability. However, okay, let's assume this is the case, okay, and there is a pole outside of the unit circle. So I know that this is unstable now, okay? So since this is unstable, I know that a pole is for sure an eigenvalue, this is also unstable. Okay, so if you have a Bible unstable system, you are sure that it will be unstable asymptotically. If you have a Bible stable system, and if you know that there is some sort of Poisson cancellation, you cannot comment on the asymptotic stability of the state space representation. Okay, uh, technically, this is everything that you should know about stability in the context of state space and input output representations. They are similar, they are related to each other. But when there is a positive cancellation, uh, you technically lose information, uh, important information, and it can really change your stability condition. An unstable system can be stable or 
by just looking at the uh, transfer function, you may not talk about the stability of the uh, state space representation. 